What is the weirdest thing that you have found in a thrift store? For me, it would be this bag of what I believe is mohair. It has been in quarantine in my freezer for over two weeks, so I hope I did not thrift any moths, and if I did, then I hope they're dead. But I believe that I found a bag of mohair wool for one and a half euros in my local thrift store. And let's spin it. Let us assess what is in this little baggie. It's not the cleanest, as you can see. There is some VM and it's matted in some places. But all in all, it looks okay. I think I'm just going to put this in a pot with some warm water and soap and well, the shock from it being frozen and then put into a hotter environment might also be beneficial for any moths if there are any that might still reside in here. I think this one is, is a short second cuts. But now shortly also maybe, how did I come to the suspicion that this might be mohair? Firstly, it is such a little baggie of wool. If it were just a regular local breed, I do not think you would keep it in such a small baggie. I think it's something precious, something rather out of the ordinary that you do not find so easily here in Belgium. The second reason why I think this might be, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but why this might be mohair is it doesn't smell like sheep. It smells, well, first off, musty because it's from the thrift store. It has this very thrift story smell. But as you saw, it's not really clean. So if this were not clean sheep wool, like I would recognize sheep like miles away. This is not sheep. And we all know, of course, that mohair comes from the Angora goats. So a goat is not a sheep and will smell a little bit different. And then also just, you know, the curls, the shape of the wool. And I have cross-referenced my suspicion with some of my fiber friends, one of whom has the fleece and fiber source book and one of whom grew up with mohair goats, angora goats, and they both say, yeah, I do suspect this might be mohair as well. So I can with at least 70% certainty say that I found mohair at a thrift store. This morning there has been a scary thunderstorm, so my rainwater vat is overflowing again, so yes. Our thrift store mohair has been going on hot, not boiling. Water for an hour, I think. That's enough, right? Let's strain it and see if we got like the very murky gray tips. You know, a little bit more clean. I did it again, didn't I? I notice when I'm talking in English that my stop words are like, like, and you know, Sometimes when I'm editing my videos or doing my subtitles, I get so annoyed by my own talking, but... You don't seem to be? Or are you? Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you can see this, but that's pretty brown water. I think we did get a lot of dirt out of there. As this is just a little bit of wool, I'm going to let my Moulin X salad spinner play another key role in this video. Now this isn't 100% completely dry, but when we come back to this in a couple of days, maybe even tomorrow, it will be. It has gotten a nice head start. Anyway, just... Oh my god. Will you look at these pretty curls?
That apparently was the prettiest part of the entire bit of wool. <laughs> anyway, we'll let this dry entirely and then come back in a couple of days and start combing. Because the tips are still a little bit matted together. So, our fiber that suspiciously looks a lot like mohair, but I cannot say with 100% certainty that it is mohair, is dry. Uh, I must admit it is also a little bit felted. Or it feels felted. Yeah, um, that could be my mistake. I might not have been careful enough when scouring this fluff, but also it could have been just felt it from sitting in a baggie too long. Some fibers do that, like if you have Shangora, don't have it sit in a baggie too long for it will just felt from looking at it. So uh, it might be my doing because as you know, unlike the Pope, I am perfectly very fallible. Anyway, let's try and comb the fibers now. I have never worked with mohair or a fiber that looks suspiciously a lot like mohair before, but I read on the internet that combing is the better prep. Now my combs might be a little bit rudimentary and I might need finer combs than this, but I don't have finer combs than this, so we're going to try with my very rudimentary Instrumentum Textili 3D printed combs. The fibers are much softer than when I first took them out of the baggie. So the washing at least did something, even if it might have felted them a little bit. Do you see how shiny this is? Mm. Damn, that is so soft. Ah, thrift store find. I want to remind you again, thrift store find. One and a half euros. Oh my god. I'm just going to keep stroking myself like this because this is heavenly. But I shouldn't. Let's, let's make some bird's nests. Combing the fiber actually deepened my suspicions that this might be more hair. Firstly, the ridiculously long staple length. I continuously had to be careful that it didn't fall back upon itself. And secondly, it really behaves like hair rather than wool. I could really see someone making a doll with this for hair. Now, hmm. I was combing it and combing also means quite a bit of combing waste like this looks like even more than was originally in the bag but this is the combing waste but I also did not comb everything some of the locks were just really pasty I'm not going to put my combs through that it's really pasty it's just, it is as if the goat I'm going to say goat from now on because I'm really suspecting this to be a angora goat and not a sheep has been rolling around in some unsavory business. I'm not saying it's poop. I'm also not saying it's not poop. Anyway, now that we've got a couple of bird's nests, let's get to the actual exciting part of this video and let's try and spin some mohair. Now the ever expanding vast source of knowledge that is the internet told me firstly that you should comb mohair and secondly, that you should spin it in a long draw manner. And as I have acquainted myself with spinning long draw with Gillian during Tour de Fleece, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it again. Feels like the mohair is uh, playing Velcro with the texture of my thumb. But otherwise, Yep, this is a, a good spin. It also does fuzz quite a bit. 
some of the more pasty locks actually made it into some of my bird's nests, like over here. And they make the spinning harder, like very hard. They don't want to be pulled apart. I'm just going to take it out of here. Uh, but sometimes I try to remedy it by pulling it apart, mid pulling it apart mid spinning, and it's ridiculous how far I have to place my hands apart to not just pull on both ends of one staple length. What a long staple length! I thought like my medium wools, my Flemish sheep, the tassel, you know, had long staple lengths. Oh, I was mistaken. <laughs> Another one of these pasty bits. It's really not going to be a very consistent regular yarn, that's for sure. But that was also not my main goal. Like also, if you ask me right now, what am I going to make with this mohair yarn? Probably nothing. It's all about the experimentation, the experience, the play. The, well, I just got this from the thrift store and I'm very excited for it and I just want to spin it. That, that's, that's the entire video. Spinning the non-pasty stuff actually just feels like spinning a dream. It is so soft, so silky, so smooth. Mm. Of course, I have as much reason to complain about pasty thrift store. One and a half euro bits of fluff as I have for complaining about VM in free fleece. Absolutely none. But if every bit of this mohair was of that fine silky smooth quality, then this would have been the thrift store find of the ages. Now we're back with some more pasty stuff though. So yeah, that um, is it? That was a lot of prep work for approximately 20 minutes of spinning on this single. Now, this is all we have. We have one bobbin. I think I will chain ply this. It in the end also doesn't matter how much meters we get, so if it's just a short end of yarn, that's good enough. Of course, I do wonder how and why this bit of mohair fluff ended up in a thrift store. And maybe the fact that it is this pasty and a little bit dirty might have been the reason why. Like I argued at the beginning of the video that this must have been some special breed of wool because it was in a small bag. But yes, maybe that is still true. But also, why would you give it to thrift store. It could of course be that someone just stopped their hobby. But then why is this pasty mohair the only thing I find in the thrift store? So maybe the previous owner of this little baggie of mohair was like mm, this might be just too pasty and dirty for me. Let's give someone else a shot. Mm. I mean, I don't blame them. It was very pasty. But the yarn that I'm creating right now is very pretty. So I am thankful that it somehow ended up in the thrift store. Here we go. A full 30 meters of chain plied mohair yarn. Yay! But I will uh, show you some better shots when I'm not struggling with the daylight and lamps and such. Good morning. Let's assess this little mohair skein that we made. Now that we have less troubles with the daylight and the lamp. And also we're able to work through our or my initial disappointment because this yarn is very underwhelming to me. I, the prep, the nests, they felt so spectacular and looked so shiny. It 
it's not really coming through in the yarn. And that is maybe my own fault. Probably my own fault. Actually, even most certainly my own fault. And now it doesn't do that anymore. Yesterday it was clearly over twisted and now it hangs balanced. Are you tricking me? Anyway, it's not as shiny and soft and spectacular as I kind of expected it from the prep, from the combed fiber. But maybe wet setting it helps. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to let it rest in a little bit of water and then we'll give it some thwacking so that maybe um, it'll bloom nicely and then be a very fluffy yarn and then that can be its quality. Let's see. It may or may not be a different day. I might have put my mohair yarn in water to absorb, to wet set, and then just left to go to my mom's and then I went to my grandfather and then I went to my auntie and uncle and then it was 10 o'clock in the evening and I went to bed. So at least we can say the cuticles of this wool had all the time to open up, saturate itself with the water and, you know, get itself neatly aligned the way my yarn wants to. Um, let's now thwack it, I guess, because this is mohair and we want it to bloom. Prepare yourselves for you might be in the splash line. So you just saw me hit my skein on the chair. That is called thwacking, as I said. Thwacking is done to make your yarn bloom, i.e. make it loftier, airier, let all the fibers stand out. And this is done for special breeds like Angora mohair or woolen spun yarns. If you have a worsted spun yarn, snapping is actually a better technique. But it's still wet right now after thwacking, but I can already see some more of the mohair hairs sticking out like like you would expect from a mohair yarn so that um, alleviates my disappointment that i had at first with this yarn let's make sure this dries properly and then then we'll come back and assess the yarn let's assess or well the yarn so our mohair yarn is now dried i am less disappointed with it it is a special yarn. Maybe I had like this feeling that because this was quote unquote a special fiber, the resulting yarn also had to be quite special. And the prep felt so nice and then the yarn feels so normal actually. That was my main problem. Like I've got nice new fiber that gave me a nice new feeling when it was combed but then the yarn just felt like yarn <laughs> i don't know if i'm describing this in sensible words but that was that was the disappointment that i had the yarn just felt like regular yarn and somehow i had imagined it to be special but now that i've thwacked it and looking at it i don't know if the camera really picks this up maybe i should put something dark behind it do i have something dark Nah. Nah. I don't know if this if the camera picks this up, but there is quite a halo around my yarn now. And I like that. This makes it look like a special yarn. <laughs> and that makes my brain and its weird waves happy. So this was it for my mystery baggie from the thrift store that apparently held a bit of mohair. This is the resulting yarn and the resulting video. I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining. <laughs> and to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video, what is the weirdest thing that you have found in a thrift store? Did you ever find fiber in a thrift store? And well, if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. But before we do that, you could always watch some more spinning shenanigans. Bye.